Greetings, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Barbara Dean Franklin Show, Real Talk, Real People. I am your host, Barbara Dean Franklin, and today I have the pleasure of sitting with my guest, DeAndrea Jordan. How are you today? I'm fine. How are you? I am wonderful. I want to thank you for coming in to uh, sit with me on the show, and on the set, and to share your story. Uh, DeAndrea is a survivor. You're living with spina bifida. Yes. Okay. And how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I know you shouldn't ask a lady her age, but if you don't mind. I'm 24. Okay. So for 24 years, you've been living with uh, spina bifida. Uh, which is uh, most commonly called the most permanent uh, birth defect in the United States. Yes. And uh, spina bifida literally means a split spine. Yes. Okay. And there are different types in, in what they're saying because I'm reading from uh, the uh, uh, website that it says that spina bifida happens when a baby is in the womb and the spinal column does not close all the way. And every day, eight babies born in the United States have spina bifida or a similar birth defect of the brain and the spine. So what I want you to do today, uh, DeAndrea, is just share with us how um, you have lived with spina bifida and how you've overcome some of the challenges that people, you know, are um, that have been put up on you, you know, because you graduated from high school. So well, let's just go back into your childhood, talk a little bit about some of the challenges, some of the things that you've had to overcome with spina bifida, okay? Um, it wasn't easy growing mm -hmm. up, but with my family mm -hmm. and God and everything else, it made it a lot easier. But okay. um, with the surgeries that I've had right. and it being in and out of the hospital since birth, it hasn't been easy at all, but I've learned to deal with it just by thinking about all the things that I've been through and how I don't even have to be here. Right, so exactly. it makes me grateful a to amen. be here. Amen, because that's uh, one thing that you shared with me. T t let's talk about how many surgeries have you had? Over 15 yeah. since birth. Okay, and that just recently you had to have something, to, like you, you always, or I'm, I'm asking because I really don't know, like water or something you have to have to relieve pressure? Is there something? It's called a shunt and it, okay. it actually helps the fluid flow as naturally as possible in my brain. Okay. And I actually had to get it revised twice in September. Okay, okay. And if if you didn't have that shunt, do you know how that would affect you? My doctor actually told me that um, I probably wouldn't live without it. Wow. Wow. So, I mean, knowing that every day that you wake up, are you, you're just grateful, yes. you know, just for another day to be here. Yes. And I know there are many people that we go through challenges in life, you know, but here is something that you deal with and you deal with gracefully. You know, I watch yes. you. I, I'm just grateful for you. I'm grateful for your mom at first. Let's, let's give a shout out to your mother. Okay. What's her, what's your mom's name again? Shanika. Shanika. Okay. And um, just the love that you have for one another, you know, just your, your mother being the wind beneath your wings you know um do you know like when you were coming up you know from because you graduated where, where did you graduate from gross point north from gross point north so you went to elementary middle school yes. and uh what was it like being in school as a young child um you know with with your um illness it was very challenging mm -hmm. being from being teased to understanding the work okay but I right. made it. You and that you <laughs> did. You know, if you graduated from, uh, you know, from the Gross Point North that you graduated from, you had to do the work. You had to put in the work. You yes. know, and you also have your sister. You know, your sister. You, your sister, and your mom. I'm sure had. You know, they were your strength that you know that kept you going. Yes. And so when you talk about being teased, and you look at the kids that are bullying today, what? How do you feel about that? Um. When I look at kids, this bullying people, you know, I don't think it's right mm -hmm. because it kind of sticks with you okay. in the long run. Mm -hmm. But I've learned to overcome certain things and not pay attention to certain things people right well I, I I've shared on the show before that I was bullied you know they used to you know always tease me because I've always been a big girl you know I'm bigger than all the other kids or whatever you know so they call me tanky wanky or don't play with Baba Jean you know and when I look at my life today mm -hmm. you know over those same people that were bullying me you know they um 
you know, I'm much stronger than they are, you know, so sometimes mm -hmm. we go through stuff, but it makes us strong, you know, mm -hmm. I look at you, I see your beauty, I see your strength, when I read your posts, you know, I see you always giving honor and praise to God, I see you always honoring your mother, you know, so sometimes God puts stuff on you because you said, you know, that um, you're glad that God allowed your story to be his glory, you know, mm -hmm. so um, although you have these challenges at, you know, um, you, you're an overcomer. You know, you are definitely an overcomer. So you um, are interested in being a um, advocate or a spokesperson for spina bifida. Tell me a little bit about um, what what you want to accomplish in telling your story. What do you want people to know about you most? I want people to know that if I can make it, they can too. Amen. And never give up, no matter how hard it is. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so you, you, your little nephew, um, Big Balls, what's his real name? <laughs> Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey. So as you look at, you know, life, you know, uh, just the opportunity to live, um, how do you how do you interact with him? You know, wh you're the oldest too of all of your siblings, yes. right? Okay, so at being the big sister, you know, how do you? What's most important to you? I try to be a role model. I try to be strong mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. and, and you are. I saw you um, when uh, Londa and Alana had the sickle cell walk. Mm -hmm. You were out there supporting them, you know. So um, you're always supporting people. So you could always hold your head up high because I, I was just sharing with somebody, you know, sometimes we go through something through things in the midst of the struggle. We don't see the purpose and the plan that God has, but there's always a purpose and there's always a plan. So I don't know, you know, if I've been through many things in my life mm -hmm. and I can't compare them to the things that you've been through. Mm -hmm. But but again, you overcome a lot of things. 24, a beautiful young lady, you know, Thank graduated you. from school and standing up and wanting people to, to, to hear your story, you know. Um, let's go back and talk about some of the surgeries that you had, some of the things that you just had to go through that people don't know, that the very kids, when, they, when you were growing up, that teased you, that laughed at you, that did whatever, you know, look at you today, you know, still standing, still strong, still beautiful, you know, you got challenges, but even when you had your head wrapped up, you were like, I can't wait to get these uh, stitches or whatever out, you know, but you know, I, I haven't seen you complain just yet, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, what you go through when you have some of those surgeries. A shunt revision is basically when um, I either have to get a new tube replaced, mm -hmm. I mean an old tube being replaced okay. with a new one, mm -hmm. or they have to drain fluid from my brain because sometimes it doesn't flow like it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. And it causes me to forget things okay. or have really bad headaches or just lay around a lot. Okay. It doesn't make me feel good when I need to go through stuff like that. Yeah. But that was the most recent one. And on top of them doing that, they had to put a um, pressure, a gravity monitor in, okay. which helps the fluid stay at a certain level okay. so it won't make me feel like it's draining too fast or draining too slow mm -hmm. so so when you when you go through that when you are laying around and you don't feel at your best and you know um, like what is your support system what do you do to really kind of just help you get through what what is you know one of the your coping me mechanisms if we can say I pray all right <laughs> <laughs> and I know for a fact that prayer changes things, you know. Um, I was supposed to speak this weekend, but as we were sitting here, I told you that the young lady, uh, uh, she had to revise it because she's in the hospital. So we're all going through something. Mm -hmm. You know, we all walk around, and that was going to kind of be my message on this week. We all walk around, we look good, you know. I have a suit, and I talk about this suit all the time. It's a double-breasted pinstripe, four, you know, it's got like four uh, buttons on the front, and it fits me like a glove. When I put that suit on, I think I'm all that and a bag of chips, right? But on the inside of the suit, the lining is tore up, it's all raggedy, and you know, so most of the time, people are walking around looking good on the outside, 
inside, but we're all messed up on the inside. We're all going through something. Mm -hmm. So for the, the children who were bullying you when they were young, you know, they were coming up, they were hurting. They don't know any better. And that's why we as women, we have to teach our children how to do better. We have to show them how to be. And I'm praying that as somebody looks at this show, they look at you, they see your tears, that they know that you can't make fun of people because people are doing and dealing the best that they can with the circumstances that they've been given in life, you know. Mm -hmm. And again, to see you overcome the things that you've overcome, to have 15 surgeries. You know, to still be willing to come in, sit down and tell your story. So you said that you were um, looking for employment, right? Yes. So we're going to see if now, you know, somebody out there that maybe can help you uh, find a job. Tell me what you're interested in doing. Clerical work. Clerical work. Okay. Yes. And when you, when you went to school, like when you graduated, <coughs> was there one specific thing that you, if you could have done anything in life, what do you know, what, it, what would it have been? To help somebody. Uh, I, I'm, I, too, want to help somebody. That's why I have the Barbara Dean Franklin Show, because I want to spotlight people mm -hmm. that are doing good things. I want to spotlight people like you who want to tell their story, who want to be an uh, advocate on the front line to, you know, to make a change in this world, you know. So mm -hmm. I think that with you sitting here today, you are helping somebody, because there's somebody out there that, is, you know, that's probably afraid to you know, tell their story or ashamed even, you mm -hmm. know, to tell their short story and they don't have to be afraid nor do they have to be ashamed of whatever it is that they go through because you sitting here is going to have somebody research spina bifida. They're going to find out exactly, uh, you know, what spina bifida is. And do you know there are more than uh, like one type of spina, spina bifida? Yes. Yeah. What, what do you know what exactly what type um, you have, you know, what happened? Just talk about a little bit about that um I, my level is l4 mm -hmm. and l4 is basically just um having the shunt like i talked about mm -hmm. and the fluid on my brain mm -hmm. and um where my scar is everybody's scar isn't the same and it's not in the same spot okay so it has a lot to do with that okay and some people with spina bifida are wheelchair bound mm -hmm and they probably won't ever be able to walk All but right. no and some people are born with that who can never walk or no they, no okay. they won't ever be able to walk and they were kind of born like that okay okay and then i know that there was some uh, different forms that as soon as the child is born you have to be operated on within two or three days of your birth so yes i was you were yes okay now as a child so you rode the bikes and did you know did you learn how to ride a bike or anything? i actually you never, never you never no. rode a bike okay never did, did you did it stop you from roller skating or you know how did it affect your i childhood? never learned that either <laughs> But it never, it nothing never really stopped me okay. from doing the things that I really wanted to do. Okay. If I wanted to do it, I did it. Okay, <laughs> and that's good, and that's the kind of uh, spirit that you have to have, uh, you know, growing up. So, um, you know, so you went to the parties or the little, you know, the dances or yes. different things like that. And did you have like that one best friend who was always there for you when you were growing up? Yes. Okay. Two actually, Two. and they okay. passed. But yeah. really, okay. I'm sorry to hear that okay but it's good to always have a best friend but i know you got two best friends in your life and probably three with little uh boss uh <laughs> big boss over there you know but i'm just uh amazed at the relationship that you have with your mom i, I didn't realize it as much as i do today that I worked so hard at being who I am because mm -hmm. I wanted to make my mom proud, you know. Mm -hmm. And I know that your mother is very proud of you. Um, I know she's your big biggest advocate because when I see you, yes. I see her, you know. She's going to make sure you get where you need to be and get everything that you need. And I just want to tell you to continue to honor her in the way, you know, that you do. Um, when we talk about um, spina bifida, um, I, I really want you to just share you know, just from your heart, um, just, you know, as you look back over your life and all the things that you've been through, just kind of share with me what you would tell somebody who does not know you about what you've been through. Well, I was born with spina bifida and I've had over 15 operations on my head, back, stomach and legs. 
um, some some days are easier than others, but for the most part, I can honestly say that I've gotten through my situation with the help of my family and having a strong relationship with God. I feel that if I didn't have the support system that I have, then I probably wouldn't be how I am. Mm -hmm. And it's 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 been a a struggle. Mm -hmm. It's hard sometimes, but for the most part, I can say that. I made it and I'm still making it. Amen. And you are going to make it no matter what God has put on us, you know, just like you. And I, I keep going back to your words, mm -hmm. you know, God allowing your story to be his glory, you know, because you're sitting here today, you know, on this show, you know. So, no, we're not on, you know, a big TV network, but you don't know the people who will be able to view the show, who you will be able to reach, who will see your strength again, mm -hmm. you know, to know that spina bifida, that, you know, you're living with it. You've yes. learned to cope, you know. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'm looking at your beautiful head to head, you know. You. Um, you know, because if you didn't open your mouth and share that you had spina bifida, who would know? You're not walking around broke down and, you know, woe is me, woe is me. You know, you're smiling. You say, hey, you know, I want to work. This is what I want to do. You know, you are uh, open to coming in, to sharing your story with somebody else that, you know, will be able to be blessed from it. Because somebody else may look and see and say, you know, well, if Deandre can do it, I can do it too. You know, to go through all of the number of surgeries that you've gone through and mm -hmm. still be strong and still, you know, want to be able to tell your story. Um, when when you were in high school, when you when you graduated, how did that feel? Did you ever think that you would, you know, make it through school, or you never you never thought about giving up? And I just mean when I say giving up, like graduating, like this is too hard. I'm not going to be able to do this. Yeah. Yes, I would be lying if I said I didn't. <laughs> but yes, I did think about giving up. But okay. my mom, she actually wouldn't let me. Okay. Like everything that, every time I told her that I thought about giving up each year, every mm -hmm. time I went up a year, mm -hmm. I would tell her, Ma, I can't do this. Okay. <laughs> and each year she would always say, yes, you can. You did it last year. Mm -hmm. So it was tough and honestly a couple weeks before graduation for high school mm -hmm. they actually told me that I didn't have enough credit okay but um I got some stuff figured out I went to my counselor mm -hmm. and I was able to do it okay. okay and they told me that I would probably need a wheelchair or help or something but mm -hmm. I did it by myself all right all right yeah because you walked in the door by yourself <laughs> you know what I'm saying and uh I, you know, like I said, I know that when you were at the um, at the walk, you probably could walk for a while, but then you get tired. Look, every time I go into the grocery store, even if I'm only getting one thing, I get a cart. I use that cart like my, you know, because <laughs> I told my daughter yesterday we went to the store. I was like, get the cart. She was having some issues. Mm -hmm. Use the cart as a, a mechanism to help you. So we all need help. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just you. We, we, we and when you need help then you get that help you know don't let your pride stand in the way as if you don't you know you don't need that help because we all need the help to to uh, get over to you know get from one point to the next point I want to just um, bring up a couple of things so there were a couple of things on I can't pronounce these um, occult spinal I'm just call it OCD and this is when infants with this they have a dimple in their lower back because most Babies with dimples do not have OCD. The, the doctor has to check with a special tool. Mm -hmm. Do you know you've heard of the OCD in spinal bifida? I actually have. Yeah. Okay, so they got spinal bifida occulta. It's often called hidden spinal bifida, and they said because about 15% of healthy people have it, and they don't even know that they have it. So mm -hmm. we could be walking around with, you know, with the in, in the invisible sign of spinal bifida, and then they talk about. Mena, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, but it's a part of the spinal cord uh, to come through the spine like a sac that is pushed out. And that when they, when they talk about that, it just kind of reminds me of a hernia, like the hernia goes through uh, the nerve fluid is in the sac and there's usually no nerve damages. So spina bifida can 
affect people in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, there's a member of my church, and she said her son had spinal bifida. I think he was like 39 or 40 years old when he passed away, and I don't know if he passed away actually from spinal bifida, but there are people that are beating this, um, you know, this... Um, illness each and every day or not beating it living with it you know yes. they don't know why it happens there's like no cure for right. it there's no real you know they don't know like okay if you did this this or this and this is why you get it mm -hmm. but the only thing that you can do is try to take preventative measures like your the shunt that you use to relieve the pain um is there anything like as you're living with this like, have you found out eating right, doing something, you know, do you use precautions like that? Is there something that you do? Not as much as I should, mm -hmm. but as I've gotten older, yes, mm -hmm. in certain ways, I try to eat better. Mm -hmm. I try not to eat as late as I normally would when mm -hmm. I was younger. Okay. And I kind of haven't got the whole working out thing back yet. <laughs> that, look, that was my next question. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go. You know, because I'm thinking, like, you know, if you did, like, yoga, is there something yes. that you could do that, you know, would help, you know, with the mm -hmm. stretches and the, you know, the back or anything like that? I have some great yoga instructors. So if you have, and have you ever tried Zumba? No. Okay, well, I have a great <laughs> Zumba. Uh, Patty Dukes Jordan, they have something new called Bokwa, I think she was doing that. But I, I definitely believe that yoga would probably be a great, um, you know, a great exercise because there's a lot of stretching, a lot of mind, you know, relaxation mm -hmm. of your mind and different things like that. So is, is there anything, you know, we're talking for a minute, is there anything that I haven't asked you that you want, you know, people to know about spina bifida or that you want them to know about you? Um, no, not really, to okay. just whatever it is that you're going through, whether if it's spina bifida, cancer, mm -hmm. diabetes, whatever, just stay strong and mm -hmm. keep the faith. Yeah, I, um, I just, um, uh, went to an event last week with a friend of mine, Keisha the Chemo Coach Smith, she has breast cancer, stage mm -hmm. four, she just had a double mastectomy, you know, and, um, uh, last week when we were out together, that was the first time she had been out of the house since she had her double mastectomy. And that's one thing that she talked about, trying not to be depressed in the midst of, you know, trying not to go through um, and staying, you know, confined in the midst of it. So, um, again, You will have the days like that, mm -hmm. I won't lie, but for the most part, when I feel myself getting into that funk, it's like I kind of try to shake myself like, no, okay. this is not it. Okay, okay. And that's... <laughs> <laughs> I had the day yesterday. You know, but we all go, you know, we all go through something. If people tell you that they're not, then, you know, they're not being honest, you know. But I, I truly just thank you for, you know, coming out, for, for, sh for sharing your story, you know. And um, I expect to see you out more and about, you know, sharing your story about spinal bifida and becoming an advocate for it because people may not ever know, you know, anything about it. As a matter of fact, when you talk about spinal bifida, I never knew anything about spinal bifida until I think it was Michael J. Fox that had a commercial about mm -hmm. spinal bifida, you know, what is spinal bifida, you know, I never knew that it's a, a, a congenital defect of the spine, you yes. know, that happens, you know, at birth or, you know, can affect you, you know, with your, um, your brain or your backbone or, you know, so I'm learning something new, even in sitting here with you, you know, it was an opportunity to get some information that I never knew before. It's an opportunity to see you, um, smile to see you being strong you know to to see the love that you and your mother have for one another for her being your biggest advocate you know for mm -hmm. you being an advocate for your um you know for your disability to to show people now you have a face you know what is spina bifida look at deandrea you know look at deandrea and see that you know i am deandrea i have spinal bifida but i'm living my life you mm -hmm. know and i have dreams and i have goals and i have aspirations and i've accomplished so many more things than you know i have not you know so you keep up the good work and everything that you're doing and if there's anything that i can do you know like i told you about the um t-shirt ties and knots you know if you mm -hmm. want to have like fundraisers or you know do something if you want to become the face 
that, you know, share your story and help people understand what you go through. Help young kids look at you and see, you know, if you see somebody with a disability, don't tease them. Help them, you know, show them because we all need help mm -hmm. in some type of way. People are going through things in life, you know, and you never know what they're going through. But a smile, a hug, an encouraging word mm -hmm. could be the very thing that helps somebody go to the next level instead of you know the nasty taunts or whatever that could take somebody and take them to their lowest point who's already suffering with something so again mm -hmm. I thank you for coming out for sharing your story with me um, I'm hoping that we were able to bless somebody with information that mm -hmm. they would have never known about about spina bifida I'm hoping that somebody sees DeAndrea Jordan's face your smile your strength and your courage and know that they can do all things if you trust God you can do all things who God can do all things but fail mm -hmm. you understand and then if you trust him you have that same power that same strength you mm -hmm. understand so thank you again for coming out thank you you're very welcome so I'm going to uh, end the show the way that I do each and every week praying that you have some information that you can take back research and uh, make a difference in your home your community in your city uh, I'm going to tell you from my beating heart to your beating heart I love you you understand okay Thank <laughs> you.